When I was asked to give this speech about passions, I asked some of my friends what passion is for them and how they live their passions and how internet has changed the way they live their passion. Here is Sylvia. She's a copywriter. Those are her business cards. Words are her passion. In any form they take, written, spoken, listened. Sylvia, Sylvia says that the internet has allowed her to, make, uh, to transform her passion in a job by letting her uh, find someone who wants to read what she writes and someone in need of her ability to write and to manage conversations. This is Renato. Renato is an entrepreneur, a successful one, I tell you. He's a biker, he's a photographer, and if you notice here, he's also a fan of Bruce, Bruce Springsteen. He's got a ticket for almost every concert of the boss in Europe in last years. For Renato's passions, internet has been a revolution, making everything easier and something even possible. Renato says that the internet is like a drug that feeds his endless curiosity for people, stories, trends, and tools. But he also thinks that making things easier sometimes has reduced the pleasure, has made some experience less intense. When you listen to music on vinyl, he says, you had to stop to stay at home in a room. Now music is everywhere, so in a way you take it for granted. She is Francesca. Francesca is a storyteller. Many of the stories she tells are about Elba Island, where she's been living in the last 15 years. She defines her life as full of passions, reading, traveling, trekking, meeting people, listening to their stories. Francesca says that the internet has been a powerful enzyme which activated connections, allowed her to meet people, to take part in events and conversations that otherwise wouldn't have been possible, a catalyst of her new life. This is Gianluca. Gianluca, Gianluca says he has no passions. He considers himself a sort of entomologist, observing from a distance other people's passions, the quarrels of football supporters, the business model of a frozen snacks dealer, the strategies of online poker players, everything people is passionate about. Gianluca says that Having only one big passion would be boring. Instead, he can change continuously his object of interest. Internet for Gianluca is a sort of wonderful vending machine, dispensing other people's passions for free. Any kind of interest, any form of enthusiasm is just a click away. And now, Biliana. Biliana, on the contrary, says she has all passions and she feeds them with the information and advice given by truly passionate people online. Music, movies, sports, uh, typography, food, wine, everywhere. Biliana says that having only one big passion would be boring. Instead, she can change continuously her object of interest, building her life as an anthology rather than a monograph. For Biliana, Internet is a wonderful repository of passions. She says, I lived well also before internet, but now it's better. I recognize something of me in all of my friends. By the way, I met all of them thanks to the web. So when somebody says that online you can't make real friends, well, they're wrong. As a former biologist, I sometimes joke with the entomologist approach but most of the times I think of myself as a multi-passionate person, like Francesca and Biliana, because I put a lot of passion in all the things I do, and, and because my life has been and is full of many passions. So none of them was actually all-consuming. Even tango, probably the strongest of them, 
left some free space in my heart and in my mind to become passionate about something else. If I think of my life before and after the advent of internet, life before internet seems to me so dull. I remember the years when I was living and studying in Ferrara. I graduated in 1988, bored and lonely, and how it was difficult for me to find somebody who shared the same interests I had. During those years, I happened to go to see a tango show in a theater, and I was struck by the beauty of the dance, by its intensity and sensuality. I wanted to learn to dance tango, but it seemed almost impossible. No teachers, no schools, nobody to dance with. So I let the idea fade away. Those were the years when a telephone call was something you did in a room. No cell phones, no emails. To keep in contact with friends abroad, we wrote letters by air mail. It seems romantic, but it was rather frustrating at times. A few years later, things began to change. When Sally Potter, in 1997, released the Tango Lesson movie, she aroused again my forgotten passion for tango. And I found a bunch of people who wanted to try to set up a tango school in Romagna. Keeping in contact was way easier now. We had lists of emails, of cell phones. We found a maestro, and we could start our first tango school. We put on regular classes, practicas, the free training sessions, and milongas. And we organized workshops with the best dancers around. When we had a great couple, say Gustavo Navera and Giselan, we videotaped their little show at the end of the lesson or during their milonga to study every detail of their dance. Good videos were rare, precious, and those unmade cassettes were a, a rare thing that we shared. And so rare was the original music. Now if I Google for Gustavo Navera, I find thousands and thousands of videos. And if I want to listen to good tango music, I just open Spotify and I find dozens of uh, playlists and radios and albums. I could start a milonga right now. So, living a passion now is much easier. And this is definitely good. But sometimes I feel overwhelmed by too many opportunities. Should I spend next hour going out to work and share my workout on Runkeeper? Or practicing calligraphy? Because online I met my calligraphy teacher, Monica Dengo. Or making sourdough bread? with the help of the sourdough community online, or making a hat that I found in a blog on crochet, or whatever. You know, information overload is a serious problem. People write books about it. And for me, it is vital to find and maintain my own focus, my balance. Balancing is very important to dance as well. And again, I find a valuable help in technology. Thanks to an app, I've built a good habit of practicing yoga every morning. With the app, it is much easier than going out to the gym, and so I have no excuses, and I do it. Online, I even discovered a technique of meditation that takes only one minute, which is perfect for me to relax before giving a speech or to make mindfulness fit in my busy agenda. So, I believe that I can dance through my life, enjoying so many passions and staying true to myself, really becoming the woman I am. It is not always easy, but I can find my way by looking forward, not backward. Thank you. <laughs>